Hello, um, I'm Andrew Robinson. I'm a, a co-director of the Wiking Centre and I'm here, we're here now um, in the section of the MOOC which is really around living with dementia. And I've got my friend Kate Swaffer here and Kate, you're a woman with younger onset dementia. That's right. And so we're going to have a little bit of a chat today. And I thought maybe, why don't you just tell us something about yourself, Kate? Okay, um, thanks for having me, Andrew. And uh, it's exciting stuff being part of the MOOC. Um, my background is that as a nurse, I worked in dementia care and in operating theatres for about 20 years and then had a life change and became a chef for 10 years and retired and then ended up in healthcare sales for a few years um, and retired after having my driver's license revoked about 10 months after the diagnosis of dementia. So I was diagnosed just before I was 50. Yeah. And you were married and you've got Married kids. with two kids. So yeah. my youngest son was in year 12 when I was diagnosed and my uh, oldest son was in his first year as an apprentice. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so can you tell us something about how you came to get a diagnosis? Um, so it's a smidge complicated. I had had some other uh, major health issues and I had to have brain surgery in early 2005 and I think, well lucky or unlucky, I don't fit the, the current status that it takes most people a long time to get a diagnosis because I didn't go through my GP. At one of my six monthly neurologist checkups I started talking about memory difficulty and uh, an acquired dyslexia which was probably 12 months after the brain surgery. Um, and then in 2007, it was getting bad enough to be affecting my work. So the neurologist uh, put me through a, the, the battery of tests, the MRI, the neuropsych testing. And I, at my follow-up appointment, he sat me down and he said, well, we've got good news. And I said, well, what's that? He said, well, it's not Alzheimer's. And hmm. I had lost insight by then and hadn't tweaked that I was being tested for Alzheimer's. So that was a bit of a marker to him. Um, and then the dyslexia and the, I have an episodic memory loss, some short term, some long term. Uh, and some of my executive functioning was changing and in 2008-2009 I was diagnosed with dementia, one of the frontotemporal dementias. And was that a diagnosis made by? It was made by Dr Cass, my neurologist in Adelaide and confirmed I had a follow-up um, session with uh, at the memory at Box Hill Memory Clinic in Victoria. So I went to Victoria for a second opinion, had MRIs and mm -hmm. neuropsych testing with a, a new team there and they confirmed the diagnosis. And in 2009 I was also asked to sit a driving test. My neurologist thought I would pass, my neuropsych thought I would pass, I thought I'd probably pass and I failed miserably 35%. Right. So um, by then I was getting left and right back to front and colours back to front. So um, I think that driving is a major issue for people with dementia. Mm. So when you sort of in the preceding period and the, the period of getting the diagnosis and immediately after that, how was that? Like, it was you... awful. Yeah. Um, I think for my children, I mean my youngest son said, but mum, that's a funny old person's disease, you can't have dementia. Um, ironically, I had worked in the first dedicated dementia unit in Adelaide in 1977, and I don't think I thought that younger people 
got dementia. Um, so I probably cried every day for four to six weeks. Um, at that stage, my husband and I were mad keen walkers and I just started running uh, in parts of the walking trails uh, and crying. And then, um, probably thanks to Mr. Google, I discovered an excerpt of an essay by a chap in the States called Richard Taylor, who was a psychologist diagnosed with younger onset dementia and he'd worked with uh, troubled teenagers and he'd used writing as part of their therapy and in this essay he uh, excerpt I found he said he'd cried every day for the first four weeks and then decided to apply his own therapy on himself and after 80 essays had a book published so I started writing and that has really been my therapist so I've got a private blog called What the Hell Happened to My Brain? <laughs> and uh, God, I'd hate that to get hacked. <laughs> um, and then I started blogging and um, that's become my community of therapists, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's a difficult diagnosis. Um, one of the unique challenges, I think, for particularly younger people is Number one, we seek diagnosis earlier than older people. We don't fear dementia because we don't consider it being mm. a possible diagnosis. Mm. It's not the most feared disease for younger people. Um, and most of us are diagnosed earlier and we look and sound fit. We don't look sick. We don't look like what the public perception is of dementia, as in hidden away, dribbling in our soup. Mm -hmm. So many people are still quite articulate uh, and quite able to function well. And so there's this sense of disbelief. Um, I've got friends with dementia who've presented at conferences and they've shown their brain scans and they've had doctors come up to them and say they've stolen somebody else's brain scan that they couldn't possibly be presenting like that if they had dementia. Mm -hmm. And then I've had people suggest that I've been lying about it for notoriety. Um, I've had uh, a registered nurse come up to me after a presentation when I was talking about the non-pharmacological and positive psychosocial interventions that I use, saying, but you know, Kate, it'll get you in the end. So there's this whole barrage of disbelief slash, doesn't matter what you do, it's gonna get you. So it's an interesting, um, unique challenge, I think, of being younger. Lots of, lots of stigma with dementia, lots of discrimination. Um, if I had, uh, when I was diagnosed, I was working full time. I was studying a double degree at university and all of the people that diagnosed me told me to give up work, give up study and live for the time I had left. And to me, I've given that a term of prescribed disengagement. And so people with dementia are basically being prescribed disengagement from their pre-diagnosis lives. And that's unhealthy for us. We need, if I had a stroke, I would have been rehabilitated and given every effort to help me get back to work. Mm -hmm. And at university, my lecturers said to me, there is absolutely no need for you to give up university. We'll set you up with a disability advisor and they can help you develop strategies to manage the symptoms, the disabilities caused by the symptoms of dementia. Mm -hmm. So um, I managed to finish both of my degrees with some um, compensation for assessments, extended exam times, extended mm. um, time frames for handing in assignments. Mm.